My question relates to our faith versus God's will. As a father, as a priesthood leader, as somebody exercising priesthood, how much does our faith affect his will? And how do we know when it will affect his will? And do we just go about it, you know, hoping and praying it will yeah. affect his will, but not necessarily knowing? Yeah. There's a line there that's sometimes yeah. difficult yeah. that we've had some very personal experience with. That sure. Hear your well, about. you've probably asked two or three questions there. Let me, let, me, uh, let me unravel that. First of all, I think in some cases you can absolutely know his will and it'll be revealed to you. He'll just tell you, this is what you can have or this is what you're to do. Uh, in a blessing, this is what you're to say. I've had those experiences. Absolute words given, probably staggering, stunning words that you didn't anticipate, but it, it can be that real. But just as surely, I think there are going to be times when you won't know what his will is, and you live by faith. And you, and I think we talk to the Lord. I think we just open the, this conversation. And, and, I, and I have these conversations. And the times when I know and the times when it's actual words given and crystal clear, that's, that's a slam dunk. You don't have to worry about that. But when it moves over into this area of we're pleading and we're asking, maybe you're administering to somebody or uh, uh, wanting to bless a child about his or her future and, and, and you're going largely on faith, the, the only two things I know to do are A, Acknowledge that we are all going to obey his will. That he has a will, he has a plan, and we can't improve on it. I never want, not in time or eternity, do I want anything but what God wants for me. I am not that smart. I am not that good. There is not anything that I'm going to know that is a better shot at my life than he knows. So it is not only acceptable doctrinally, it is imperative, I think, that we, com that we commit to the idea that we're going to yield to his will. We're going to obey his will, partly out of self-interest. Shouldn't only be self-interest, but if you want to just get down and candid, <laughs> uh, part of it is because that's going to be the best thing in all eternity for me. And so that's what I want, his will. But as I understand it, when he said, let's, let's stay with the idea of administering to somebody. As I understand it, that once we acknowledge that, the way the Savior did, the great lesson of the Savior's life, the great lesson of the Savior's life was his, his obedience to the Father. That always and ever he was going to do the will of the Father and always said, what you've seen me do is it just as what I've seen the Father do. I, what, what you hear me teach it's the things my father taught me. It's, that is the great classic lesson of his life passed on to us is the idea of yielding to the will, including in the Garden of Gethsemane. I think the one time, the one time in his life when he really would have liked to have considered some other options, but still says, not, not my will, but thine be done. That is the great lesson of, of the atonement and of the Savior's life. But having said that, and having acknowledged that, and really truly believing it, then it seems to me that what the Father has said back in return is, okay, now if you really, really mean that, and you don't know exactly what my will is, you tell me what yours is. Tell me what you want. And with great generosity, because his will may be this big, and there's a whole ton of room in here for us to maneuver, so there, there clearly is within this large realm of will, his will, there is apparently a great deal of flexibility because I think it's the majesty of his will, it's the majesty of his vision that is so much more than ours that he gives us a lot of chance to say, if you really will commit to my will and you'll be obedient to it, then I'm more than willing to listen to your will and see, see how close you are, <laughs> see how close you've got this thing figured out and then wait and watch for the miracles. So that's the two halves of that, that I would say. One, you can know, and sometimes you really, truly, truly do. When you don't know, you still yield subservience. You still yield obedience. Somebody mentioned King Benjamin over here, the, the natural man thing, that you're going to yield and be a, become as a child, 
and submit to the will of the Father. And then this wonderful invitation that he gives us to say, I've got a lot of room in my will, and I can fit a lot of yours if it isn't bad for you, if it isn't uh, out of line. Somebody, uh, an, an old Baptist preacher uh, told me once in a, in a BYU meeting I was in with him uh, in our association, our presidential association, and he said, what I've learned in this life is we can all have what we want or something better. I think that's the way God sees it. The only time you wouldn't get what, he, what you want is if he has something better. And as a good parent, would overrule for your good. And I believe, in his little Baptist way, he preached a real sermon that day to me. Everybody can have what they want or something better. In the meantime, we have lots of chances to worry about whether there's a downside to it or whether there's a disappointment in it. But in Sister Holland's message, if we'll hang on to the end of the road, uh, Jacob will come and tell us how much he loves us through uh, that kind of faith and perseverance. But I think everybody in the church has asked that question, particularly a priesthood bear. What can I promise here? What can I say? What am I entitled to prophesy or declare? And it's a great growing lesson to struggle through to learn that, I think. Pay the price to learn that.